Good day everyone, this is Ohio Dan. Today's video should be a fairly short production. It's basically a continuation of what I've talked about before that I've labeled the brass tax problem of gender relations today, which, especially for more supposedly conservative-leaning women, there's this idea that men and women just need to work together and wave the magic wand and somehow conquer all of our mutual issues together instead of being separated and having this hostility toward one another and all this. And the reason why I call this the brass tax problem is that when you actually boil things down to what we need to do to solve this issue, you need to get rid of the Duluth model for domestic violence. You need to get rid of one-sided gender roles, one-sided reproductive rights. You need to get rid of the family law courts as they are now and have a fault-based only divorce system that requires evidence and is based on actual contract law. Well, there's no actual movement among these supposed conservative women to do that, right? They don't actually want to deal with the issues. They want to basically deny gynocentrism and pretend like we should just work together somehow and that love is going to conquer all things and all that sort of nonsense that really doesn't address the issues for what they are. But this video is meant to focus on an analogy for how I view the current situation between men and women today, the modern gender dynamic, at least in Western culture. And that is this idea that you are just supposed to basically work for nothing, that you're supposed to work for no pay and be content with that. It's like saying, well, it's time for our paychecks now, for the job, for the work that we've been putting in for the past week, two weeks, however often you get paid, and your boss just says, nah, you're not going to get paid anymore. I'm not going to pay you. There's not going to be any sort of monetary benefit at all for continuing to do this job. Sorry. And then you say, well, okay, I'm not happy about that. I quit. If I'm not going to get paid, there's no reason for me to work. And it would be as if your boss saying, oh, you can't do that. You can't just quit. I don't plan on ever paying you again, but you need to work for free anyway. You're just a quitter if you don't decide that you're going to give me your labor anymore, that you're not going to invest in this situation now. You know, you can't just have this attitude. We need to negotiate, right? We need to reach a compromise. We need to have some sort of arbitration to decide what we can do for you, even though you're not getting paid for your labor and for your efforts in this job anymore. Wouldn't that be absurd? Wouldn't that be something that you would clearly just take as some sort of ridiculous joke and then never do any sort of work for that person again? Well, why does this work when it comes to relationships with women? How is it that if men don't benefit from long-term relationships and marriage anymore, that we should still want to be a part of this? Why should we invest and put our efforts into a woman that can just leave you at any time, take half your stuff, take your kids, take your house, make up false accusations, get you fired from your job, ruin your reputation, and so forth. Why should we invest our labor into that? If this wouldn't make sense in any other area of life, why would we be willing to do it when it comes to relationships with women? And that is a big part of what this entire issue boils down to. And I've discussed this many times before. It's just an attempt to hide the facts to obfuscate the situation so that men don't see things clearly. Because if men made decisions when it comes to the women in their lives, the same way that they made decisions in other areas of their lives, like their jobs, they would never deal with long-term relationships again. The only exceptions to that would be the men that feel like they have to try to have a family anyway and have to have some sort of strategy to get around the modern gender dynamic. But Things are so one-sided in favor of women when it comes to so many different things, whether it's gender roles, reproductive rights. Men have no reproductive rights beyond don't stick your dick in crazy, but then we need to be in an uproar about women's right to abortion of convenience being taken away in certain states in the U.S. Does that make any sense? Is that some sort of arrangement where there's any sort of parity and any sort of bounce? No, of course not. And yet men are still expected to put themselves on the line, potentially get involved with a woman that could at any time just play Russian roulette and decide that you're going to be on the bad end 
of whatever it is that she decides to do. Whether it's cheat on you, take your kids, divorce you, make false accusations, all the stuff I've already mentioned. Why on this planet would you want to do that to yourself? You wouldn't invest in any other situation where there's no payoff, where there's no return. So why would you do that with women when in the vast majority of cases, there is no benefit to you as a guy for even considering getting involved in a long-term committed situation or relationship with a woman? It's crazy that somehow that doesn't compute when it comes to this particular issue, but it would be so easy to spot this when it comes to anything else like your career or just a job that you were doing. If you're not going to get paid, there's no return on your investment, you're not going to sit here and work for free, so why would you be in a relationship that you don't benefit from? Why would you sign a marriage contract that you don't benefit from? Why would you live with a woman when you know that she could call the police on you and listen and believe her way into a domestic violence charge against you potentially? Whether or not you're actually convicted of anything isn't the point, right? Why would you even put yourself in that situation when that can happen so easily and it's just up to the will and the whim of the woman that you happen to be with to not decide to do that? What's the payoff there? Like, why have kids that can be taken from you so easily? What is the benefit of doing that? And I guess you could say, well, it's because I want to reproduce and have my genome be continued for generations into the future. I don't see that as a very persuasive argument, but I guess I could understand if men really want to do that for that reason, that that's their choice. You could argue about what is and what isn't payment for you as an individual guy, but for the most part, you're just not getting paid in a relationship. There's no return on your investment. You as the guy are expected to be traditional. You as the guy are measured by how much money you make and how masculine you are, but yet the woman doesn't have to do fuck all for you in most cases. How is that a worthwhile investment? How are you getting paid anything by putting yourself in that kind of situation as a man today? And that is the analogy that I see at play here, is that it would be like your boss just saying, oh, you need to work anyway. How dare you decide that you're not going to do this work for us? You're not a real worker. You're lazy for not doing this work for free. That is like the shaming tactics that are being used against men today to not get married and not have a long-term relationship and commit to a woman. Why would you do that? There's no pay. Those shaming tactics wouldn't work from your employer if you weren't getting paid for the job that you did. So why do these shaming tactics work for men today when it comes to marriage, having kids, or having some form of conventional long-term relationship where you're trying to be the provider and protector for a family that can be taken from you at any time, basically because the woman decides that she's not happy. How does that make sense in that scenario when it would be so clear and so self-evident that in an employment type scenario, it would make no sense at all? Now, just one caveat to this. I'm not saying that you can't do things where you don't get payment. I'm not saying that you can't do favors for people that everything is just about money. I'm not saying that you can't care about someone at an emotional level as well. What I'm saying is that anything that you do significantly over a period of time, whether it's for work, whether it's the people that you have in your personal life, whether it is a relationship if you're going to still date at all, whether it's any other area of your life that matters, your friendship circles, only be around people and only be part of situations where there's some sort of payoff. It doesn't make sense to spend a significant amount of time on people and things that don't benefit you unless you're doing it as a hobby, right? Something that you would just enjoy doing and that's the benefit. But so much of the modern gender dynamic is just based on the idea that men should just do things that don't benefit them because that's what men are supposed to do. And it's nonsense. That is what so many of these perspectives, whether you're dealing with the feminist women who are usually easier to spot right away and just dismiss everything they have to say as misandry, basically, or your supposedly traditional women out there who will say these kinds of things like men and women just need to work together. 
oh, okay, so you're going to get rid of all the advantages you have, all the privileges you have over gender roles, reproduction, the family courts, the workplace situation with Me Too. You're going to get rid of all that now? Oh, no, we're not going to do anything about that. Then why would we take this seriously? And that's where we're at with this analogy, too, I think, is that if you're not getting paid for something, why would you continue to do that job if there's no benefit for you to be in a relationship why would you take the idea of being in a long-term relationship seriously? What is the payoff? Why would you, and I know some people don't like me saying this, they think it's a weird thing to say, but I'm weird anyway, so I'm going to say it anyhow. Why would you try to build a life with a woman, or if people prefer, build a family with a woman, that can just be taken from you at any time? It's like working a job where you're not going to get paid, where there's no long-term sustainable thing that you're getting out of this, you're just supposed to do it because, basically. That's expected of you. That wouldn't work in that arena. So why does it work in the arena of relationships with women? And a lot of it comes down to muddying the waters as much as possible and just trying to shame men so they don't see this type of analogy and they don't realize that it's not in their better interest to seriously consider getting married, having kids, and basically trying to live the traditional lifestyle when it's really not a viable option and it can be taken from you at any time, it's really like, well, you may not get paid for the work you do, but you should just do it anyway. There's really no point in putting yourself in that situation. I do believe that more men are figuring this out. And the bottom line is we wouldn't do this with any other area of our lives as men. So why would we consider this idea of working for free or doing something because it's what men ought to do if there's no benefit to you there's no reason to do it in any area of your life, including when it comes to your dealings with women, in my opinion, right? If someone basically told you that, hey, you're going to continue to do this job, but you're not going to get paid for it anymore, and you can't just quit because that's wrong, and you're lazy, and you just need to do it because of other reasons, even though you're literally not getting paid, and we need to negotiate we need to find a compromise and figure out how you can still do this work without getting paid. You would not take that seriously when it comes to your employment. You would not take that seriously when it comes to your paycheck. Why would you take that seriously when it comes to investing in a relationship, given that this is pretty much the modern dynamic at play, that there's pretty much no benefit for you as a man to get married or have kids that can be taken from you so easily? There's no reason to invest in that. Again, unless you're one of these men that feels like he has to do that. But if you have other options available, why would you put yourself in that scenario? How does it make sense to entertain this idea that men and women just need to work on things together? Even women that are your friends and not someone that you would ever actually date. Why would you work on things together with any women that don't have a positive role to play in your life and there's no payoff in dealing with. And why would you invest in this whole idea of fixing gender relations when unless certain things are done, things are not going to be fixed. Unless you're going to treat men fairly, which is not going to happen in all likelihood, and get women to give up the one-sided advantages that they have and get the pendulum to swing back toward the middle again when it comes to modern gender relations, then all this is is just you need to work for free. You need to invest in this even though there's no benefit. You wouldn't accept this in other areas of your life. So why would we as men who are aware of these things accept this when it comes to our dealings with women instead of just rejecting this outright and continuing to recognize that we are not really going to be treated fairly so we might as well live for ourselves instead of essentially working for free or the equivalent of doing that with this analogy. The equivalent of working for no pay because it's just what you're expected to do is absurd. So why would we do that when it comes to relationships with women?